All right, in this particular lesson, what we're going to investigate is geometric sequences and series word problems. Uh, what we're going to focus on in this particular problem is a bouncing ball problem, but it comes, uh, what will show up is a lot of different issues that will show up in a lot of different types of word problems. So uh, it's applicable to a lot of word problems that we're going to get into in geometric sequences and series. Um, this problem says a ball bounces to 65% of its previous height after each bounce. If the ball is dropped from 15 meters, determine the first term the common ratio, and Tn, so the general formula. Uh, the first term here is the height that it's dropped from, so T1 is equivalent to 15. The common ratio here is 0 0.65 because every every bounce it's reaching 65% of its previous height. Uh, so the general formula would be that T1 is equivalent to 15 times the common ratio to n minus 1. So if you look at this next uh, problem, the extension says, what height does the ball reach after nine bounces? So this is a general term problem. So we're not finding the sum of all the bounces. We're finding after nine heights, so here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. After nine bounces, what's the height of the ball? And it says to the nearest tenth of a centimeter. There's a couple things we need to be careful of. You could either use the common sense method uh, or the formula method. If you're going to use the formula method, what you have to be aware of is that term one uh, which is 15, is actually before one bounce. I'll show you why this is important in a second. Term 2, if I wanted to find it out, it would be uh, <clears throat> 15 times 0.65, so 65% of that height would be 9.75. Uh, that is after one bounce. And if you look at the next part, uh, term 3, for example, would be after two bounces. So what you'll notice here is that term nine is actually not after nine bounces. If term three is after two bounces, then it's actually going to be term 10 that's after nine bounces. So just be careful about that uh, if you're going to use the formula. So in this particular case, uh, term 10 is what we're, what we're solving for, not term nine, even though it's after nine bounces. So if we use the general formula, it would be that the term or the value of that term is equivalent to 15 times 0 0.65 to n, which is 10, minus 1, so that is 15 times 0 0.65 to the ninth. So in this particular case, to solve what it is, 0 0.65 to the power of 9, and then times 15, and that height is 0 0.3106, so 0 0.3106, and that would be, if I times that by 100, because it wants it in centimeters, and we're in meters at the moment, uh, that would be 31.1 centimeters after nine bounces. Uh, the common sense method would say if you don't use the formula, it would be nine common ratios later that would be after nine bounces. So the exponent here would be nine. You could have jumped straight to that step. Uh, the next problem says, after how many bounces will the ball reach a maximum height less than one centimeter? So we are trying to solve for n in this particular case. So we know that the height's going to be one centimeter. So if we're using meters, that's 0.01. Uh, and the height is going to be less than that. So uh, term 1, which is uh, 15, to the common ratio, 0 0.65 to the n minus 1. So what I'm going to do is, and the only way we know in this particular case to solve for the exponent, or n minus 1, is I'm just going to guess and check. So uh, if I go ahead and just start guessing for exponents, uh, let's say I guess that it's going to be after... Well, for an exponent of 15, which would be actually after 15 bounces. Uh, so I will, I'll do uh, 15 times 0.65 to the power of 15. Uh, that's still more than one centimeter, so it's going to be more bounces until that particular time. Let's go ahead and see if uh, it's after 17 bounces. So it would be 0.65 uh, to the power of 17. Uh, that is just under one centimeter. It's it's 0.9 of a centimeter. So that is when this exponent is 17. So by guess and check, we found out that this is 17. So in other words, n minus 1 is 17, which means that n would be 18. But if you look at the pattern here, if it's the 18th term, that would actually be after 17 bounces. Or in other words, if you use the common sense method, uh, that would be after. So whether you're looking at the pattern or not, it's going to be after 17 bounces, that it's just less than one centimeter. Uh, the last problem here says, what is the total vertical distance the ball has traveled when it hits the floor for the eighth time? Um, 
total vertical distance would suggest that what we need to do is add up all of the vertical distances. In this particular case, uh, total vertical distance, one thing we have to be aware of is that what comes up must also come down. So in this particular case, most of these bounces, so starting after the first bounce, uh, most of these bounces happen twice. So if you look at this particular case, all of these bounces are happening twice. Uh, the only distance that's not happening twice is the first distance. This is only going down. So in this particular case, uh, we have when it hits the floor for the eighth time, that would be eight terms. Uh, you can look at the pattern if you'd like to, because when it hits the ground for the first time, that would be the distance of term one. So term two would be the distance uh, when it hits the ground for the second time, etc., etc. So term three, term four, term five, term six, term seven, term eight. You could always draw a diagram just to be careful uh, when you're doing word problems. So in this particular case, what I want to find is the sum of all of these bounces. Uh, you could do it without a formula. It would take a little bit of time, but you could. Uh, but here's the idea. I need to find out the sum of the first eight terms, and all except one of them happen twice. So I'm going to find the sum of the first eight terms, multiply it by two, and then subtract the first distance because that's only happening once. So that's the big picture here. So what I'm going to do uh, is find out the sum of the first eight terms. So uh, let's go ahead and do that. <clears throat> And that sum would be, let me go ahead and do it on my calculator, uh, 0.65 to the power of 8. And then if I subtract 1, times that by 15. And I'm going to divide that by negative 0.35. Uh, if you'd like to spend more time with it, you can be careful. But it's about 41.5. And I think that's just uh, what I'll leave it at here. So that sum would be uh, 41.5. However, what we need to be careful of is this is just represents all the first eight terms only once. So what I need to do here is I'm going to double it because what comes up must come down. So in that particular case, if I times it by 2, I get 82 or 83.0, I should say. Uh, that would be 83.0. And that's the distance of it going up and down every single term. However, what we found out is that this first term, because it only goes down, it's being dropped from a height, that first term only happens once. So what I need to do is subtract that distance, which the initial height was 15. So when I subtract 15, I will get a total vertical distance of 68 meters.